Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, I'm going to be using a GeoGebra sketch that I built uh, to help us see how we define the derivative at a point. Now, um, this GeoGebra sketch is uh, freely available at GeoGebra's website, geogebra.org. So here is the uh, is the uh, app is the uh, application here, and you'll see some. Uh, questions and, and comments down here below okay so let's uh, let's start with this so let's go over what the parts of this are and then we'll see what uh, what we can get out of this so the first thing is we we have a function here graphed I can move this over a little bit which I'm going to do and you type the formula in here right now I'm just using our, our good old friend uh, f of x equals x squared but you can change that formula to anything you want by just typing in that bar. Now we pick a point A that we want to uh, center at. We can do it by moving this, this uh, light blue point A on the x-axis, or we can slide it with the slider here, or we can actually just type a number in. I'm just going to type in uh, 1 here, and that'll take us to a point where A is 1. Of course, there's A0 uh, A or 1, 0. And then you go up and see where that is on the graph, which is a comma f of a. In this case, that's 1, 1. 1 squared is 1, so the output is 1 as well as the input. Now, we can choose an h value here. An h uh, for a difference quotient is going to be delta x. And uh, h can be uh, adjusted by the slider here or by typing in something here. Uh, notice as I adjust h then this point A plus H is down here, and H can be seen as this horizontal green distance here. H can be negative, then it goes the other direction uh, to the left of A. So, But for right now, I think I'm going to let it be, say, 0.5. And I can also adjust H by just typing in the uh, uh, input box, as you just saw there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's called the difference quotient. The difference quotient is nothing more than just a slope formula. So if I click on this, it shows the difference quotient. And it's the slope of this, uh, this purple line. This is the difference quotient line, secant line. So in other words, it's a slope between two points on the graph where we have one is our point of interest, A, F of A, and the other is a nearby point, A plus H, um, comma f of a plus h. So here's a, a, here's a plus h. This vertical distance here, signed this distance, is positive 1, is, is uh, f of a. And f of a plus h is the vertical distance from the x-axis up to this point, which in this case is 2.25. Uh, 1.5 squared is 2.25. Now, when we want to do the slope formula between those two, that's all the difference quotient is. Let me put it back to where I had that. Oops. 1 and 0.5. Okay, good. So, if we look here, we just want to take these two points. That is the point 1.5 and 2.25 and the point 1, 1 and find the slope. That's all there is to it. We've been doing slopes like this since, oh, since way back, probably since junior high school at least. So the slope of this purple secant line, I'll use the letter M like we normally do. Remember that's delta Y over delta X, or Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And of course, Y2 is just F of A plus H. Y1 is F of A, but notice that, that H is delta X here. So delta X is H. 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5, and that was our H. So the denominator is that 0.5, we mean we're, meaning we're going to the right a half. And how far do we go up? Well, that's delta y, which is the length of this little uh, uh, orangish, uh, yellowish orange uh, vector here. And that is f of a plus h minus f of a. That's the numerator here. So that's our 2.25 minus 1. That's 1.25 divided by 0.5. That works out to be 2.5, which is a slope of the between two points on the curve, or in other words, the slope of this secant line to the curve there. And we can experiment with this with different values of h, both positive and negative. Okay, and we want to think of it usually as h being something 
relatively small. And of course, we can do this at various points for A on the graph as well and see what we have there. Okay, so let's say we go back to where we started. Okay, and that's where we were. Now, another thing we can look at is called the symmetric difference quotient. The symmetric difference quotient is also the slope between two points on the curve. It is also a slope of a secant line, but this time, instead of using the point of interest, we use points on either side of the point of interest. And we're going to go the, uh, the same distance both ways. So we go h to the right, that's a plus h. So in this case, that's 1.5. Find the y that goes with that. And then we're also going to go h to the left. That's a minus h, or in our case, 1 minus a half is a half. And so then we do f of that. Here the numbers worked out, uh, at least for that point. And then we can see that we're just doing the slope formula there again. So slope, once again, is just uh, delta y over delta x, vertical change over horizontal change. So this time, this y is f of a plus h. This y is f of a minus h. In our specific cases, the y up here, once again, is uh, 2.25. And down here, it's 0.25. If you subtract that, you get 2. Now, if we look at delta x this time, however, it's not h, it's actually twice h. It's h from here to here, and then h more from here to here for 2h total. We went h to the left and the right for a total of 2h on our horizontal change between those two points. So it's once again a slope, but we're not using our point of interest. We're using point of two points on either side of that. And the symmetric part of it is, is because that they are evenly spaced horizontally, not necessarily vertically. Uh, for example, vertically, there's less change between this first point on the left and the, and the point of interest here than there is from the point of interest up to here. But horizontally, the change is the same, and that's h from each one to each one here. So delta x is 2h going all the way across. All right, so 2 times 0.5 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, and so the slope of that orange secant line is 2. And once again, we can see what happens as we change h, or we can see what happens as we change a. Okay, so let's go back to where we started. So there's both the difference quotient and the symmetric difference quotient shown side by side. So they are both just slopes between two points on the on the line, on the curve, to slopes of secant lines. Now so far we haven't really done any calculus whatsoever because this is just pre-calculus stuff, just good old slope formulas. But what we want to do is to apply a limit to this. That's going to turn it into calculus. And the limit that we're going to apply is to let h get closer and closer to 0. So what's happening to both of these secant lines as h gets closer and closer to 0? What's happening? Now, they both become 0 divided by 0 when we have h equals 0, so if we were to plug in h equals 0 here, most of this stuff is just, it's going to collapse. And notice that the, the difference quotient, the symmetric difference quotient, are 0 divided by 0. They're undefined. So it doesn't make sense to let h be 0. But in calculus, we can let h approach 0. And uh, maybe we could look this at the... Uh, at these, if you look, they're getting closer and closer to a tangent line, a line that just touches in one point. Remember from geometry, a line that touches a circle in two points is called a secant line, and a line that touches a circle in one point is called a tangent line. So we're borrowing that terminology from there. Now, if we look at the numbers here, look at the numbers focused right here in the uh, difference quotient. Let's just uh, forget that for a minute. Just focus in on the difference quotient. What happens as we uh, 
let H come in towards zero here. So we're going to So as H comes in closer and closer to zero. Okay. Where what are these what are these numbers approaching? If you look, I think you can see that it looks like those numbers are, are kind of coming in on two, it looks like. Okay, that was from the right. If we come in from the left side. It looks like we're below two, but still coming up closer and closer to two as we come in from that side. And uh, with the symmetric difference quotient, it's all also approaching, approaching two as well. In fact, the symmetric difference quotient actually, this one looks like it's, it actually is two the whole time. Okay, so whether you're talking about the difference quotient or symmetric difference quotient, it's approaching the tangent line. So the tangent line is red. And so we say, we call that the derivative. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. And that is denoted by this uh, notation f prime of a, or df over da, such that x equals a. Uh, the reason why we have two notations comes back from the origins of calculus, where we had two main uh, founders of calculus, uh, Newton and Leibniz. And Leibniz used this notation on the right. Newton used the notation on the left. And both of them are useful here. So we kept both of them. And we call this, the, this is the difference quotient, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. When we take the limit as h goes to 0, then that gives us our derivative. In our case, a is 1, f of a, well, is f of 1, which is actually also 1. But this is going to change as h changes. That's what this number is right up here. But then we take that limit, and we see that it approaches 2. Of course, the equation of the tangent line is just the point slope form of the line y equals the slope, which is the derivative, f prime of a, times x minus the a plus the f of a. So that's that's basically m times x minus uh, x1 plus y1. So in our case, that's 2, parentheses, x minus 1 plus 1. And of course, everything in this thing is dynamic. So if we if we change here, everything, all the numbers, all the formulas, and everything are, are updated automatically. So just one more time. As h approaches 0, the tangent line, the secant line approaches the tangent line. Now the derivative is not the tangent line. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So the derivative is a number. For a specific a value, it's a number. It's a number with a meaning. It is the um, slope of that tangent line. Um, another way we can actually see actually all three of these things, the difference quotient, symmetric difference quotient, and the, the uh, derivative, we can see those as links. So if we look at a delta x of 1, regardless of what h is, say h is say 0.1 maybe, uh, let's make it 0.2, let's say. Okay, we can look at the difference quotient, which is there. And you know what? Let me 
change. Let me change it over here. You can see the uh, the symmet the difference quotient. Let's just take that away. I can see the difference quotient here as this length right here, a signed length going up, so it's positive. So this length right here is the difference quotient. Well, why is that? That's the same line, same secant line that we had for the difference quotient. See, that's the same same line, that purple line, that purple line, same line. So the slope of the line, remember, is the amount that y goes up, positive or down, negative, when you go to the right one. So notice when we go to the right one, the line, the secant line, goes up by uh, 2.5, and that is the difference quotient right there. Similarly, the symmetric difference quotient is right here. Here's the line for the uh, symmetric difference quotient, and we're going to the right one, and we can see it go up by that amount. The derivative is right here. It's how much the um, uh, tangent line goes up when we go to the right one. Okay, of course, the h has nothing to do with the derivative, but it can change, say, for the uh, difference quotient. And something is wrong for the for that. I need to fix that. Let me see if I can fix that application. Okay, so once again, we can see the derivative is this vertical distance, how much the tangent line goes up when we go to the right one. Whereas, for example, the difference quotient length is how much the secant line goes up. In this case, the secant line is a little large. It's about 2.78. Uh, of course, as h approaches zero, that's going to approach that um, tangent line, and the uh, slopes is going to approach the derivative. Symmetric difference quotient, similarly. Now, one final thing. This is the amount that the function actually goes up. I want to call that delta f, which in this case it's uh, 3, when we go to the right one from a. a is 1 here. So the right one from 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So we're going up 3. The change in the function is this distance. The change in the derivative is this distance here. So once again, change in the derivative change in the function when delta x is 1. Now what I want to point out is these are two different things, but then I'm also going to say that these two things are relatively close to each other, and <clears throat> we often use one of these to approximate the other. That's called a local linearity idea, and if you um, uh, we often will approximate the amount the function goes up or down when we add one to the input. That's actually the blue distance, but we'll say it's approximated by or close to the derivative, which is that, how much the tangent line goes up when we go to the right one. So sometimes we'll use the derivative to approximate this change in y, and sometimes we'll use the change in y to approximate the derivative. We can go kind of back and forth with that. Okay, and then finally, I want to show you one more thing. Let's just leave the, uh, the tangent line there for the derivative. And I want you to look what happens when I zoom in closer and closer to that point. As we zoom in closer and closer, it starts to look what? More and more like a line, specifically the tangent line. You look at it back out at this level, it doesn't look much like a line at all. But as we zoom in closer and closer, centered in on that point of tangency, we see that it's staying with the line for a while. Now, technically, it's only touching this in one point, 
this line is actually tangent to the curve, only touches in that one point, so they are different. They are diverging from each other. But as we zoom in close, these things are very, very close to each other. And if we zoom in enough, they're basically indistinguishable from each other. So if we have a differential function, uh, or a function that's differentiable at a point, then we say that it's it's locally linear there. It looks like a line. And the, the three-dimensional version of this is that when we have a differentiable surface, it looks like a plane. And you're used to this idea. Uh, we're very, very small and zoomed in on the surface of the Earth, which is more or less a sphere. But when we're zoomed in really close, it looks like a plane, like the tangent plane. So it may appear a plane to us because we're zoomed in so close. Same idea applies here, back a uh, lower dimension. <coughs> As we zoom in on the graph of the function, it looks like the tangent line. So hopefully that helps explain the derivative at a point. And hopefully you can use this GeoGebra applet to help you examine that. You can experiment with this by changing all the different inputs, experiment with some different formulas, experiment by changing the value of A, experiment by what happens with H, and look at all these different pieces. Hope you got something out of that. Hope you can make use of not only this video, but also the GeoGebra applet. I encourage you strongly to uh, download it and start experimenting with it yourself or just use it online. You don't have to actually download it.